Good afternoon, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace, and what you're about to see is a very long requested video about how to make rolled tube fuselages for indoor airplanes. So what we have here right now is, I'm working on a new 35 centimeter, much bigger than the, uh, the previous one in terms of wing area, and this is my old one. Um, I have miked the diameter on this one to uh, approximately 0.155 inches. Um, so we know that from that we need a radius, oops, uh, sorry, a uh, circumference of 0.487 inches. Uh, we're going to round that up to 0.5 inches because the wood shrinks uh, when you roll it. Um, this is sea grain balsa. It's a scrap of it that's um, about the length we need. It's, uh, what is that, 10.25, uh, 10, uh, 10 and a quarter inches. Um, this is a dial thickness gauge, and you do not have to have one of these to become an expert in indoor, but it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, we know from this that the, uh, the sheet is about uh, uh, 12 thousandths on one side, uh, thickening, up to, um, or, yeah, thickening up to about, uh, sorry, thinning to 10 thousandths on the other. And you can run that around on, on your sheet uh, carefully and, and get your thickness. So I'm going to cut from the thin side. It's pretty easy to also, if you can get it shining up in the light, you can tell one side's darker than the other, and that's the thicker side. Uh, I'm going to use Star Brand razor blades. So these are double-edged razor blades, and you break them in half and then snap one side to a point. Expect to replace these often, very often. Uh, they, they're excellent blades. They are no longer made, so you have to source uh, used blades off of eBay or something. So what I'm going to start with doing here is I'm going to notch um, this piece of wood. Um, I'm going to notch it such that I need a little triangle cut out right here. Um, and that's going to be my mark on each side. The reason I do that is if you just mark it with a pen, um, well, you're down to the width of the pen line in order to determine where to cut. And I would like to be more precise than that. A few people will wisely ask, what in the world are you doing with a motor stick that skinny? And the answer to that question is, that's what worked. So I'm not parting from it. I've tried thinner wood on uh, larger diameters, and that has resulted in um, not very happy experiences. So as you can see, this wood, the sharp, fresh blade, uh, cuts through this wood very easily. So the next thing is we need a, a mandrel. This is, uh, what is this guy? I think it's 3 16th, something like that. Um, yeah, this is 3 16th. So, no it's not. It's smaller than that. I can't even read my own gauge right now. One eighth. So very, very small. We're going to wrap this guy around here. And what we're going to do is we're going to wet form it. Now I want to mention this is a tapered boom. This is for built for long ago when they were using real short tail booms. Uh, so we're going to get kind of creative with that. But let's go over to the countertop. We're going to roll this guy up and throw it in the oven. Okay, we've got our mandrel here piece of aluminum tubing like I mentioned. It needs to be nice and clean. Uh, this is a piece of Japanese tissue paper. If you got it, use it. This stuff is strong when wet, so it's much easier to maneuver. And I've got uh, about a full wrap on here so far, so we don't have any seam exposed to the wood. I'm gonna lay it out flat here, get all the wrinkles out. That's good. Now a lot of people recommend soaking your wood in hot water. Please excuse the messy kitchen. It's been a busy weekend. I personally do not spend much time soaking my wood, and since I've gotten away with it, I am sticking with it. So, wipe the excess water off, bring this guy over here, lay it in place. And it will stick into the tissue pretty good. It won't stick when it's dry, but when wet, it sticks pretty good. And at this point, We'll make it that nice and parallel, and then we lay even pressure across the whole thing, 
And a fair amount of pressure. I mean, you don't want to squish the wood till you damage the grain, but enough pressure to make it lay down real nice. And on we go. And you will notice that that thing doesn't go all the way around this mandrel. So we're going to need a mandrel slightly smaller to actually glue the seam. At this point, toss this guy in the oven. Bake it at 200 and where's the there you go or you can just wait on it to do its thing now for our tapered boom run this all the way to the skinny end here as we are building as skinny and as light as we can because there is no minimum weight don't hear from me ever again after this video is because my camera person murdered me for showing off the kitchen with okay so we had a uh, disk space issue there not what it really was is she was trying to beat me to death for showing off the messy kitchen <laughs> if the uh, screen becomes unsteady you'll know that my wife is laughing at me because I'm cracking jokes while trying to do this All right, so we got this piece of tissue on here somewhat sorry for the darkness because we have decent lighting in here. I guess I could turn on the LED lighting or something there. Alright. Yeah, much better. Now we're going to lay this guy all the way down here on the end like I mentioned. Well, we're going to try to. This is 8,000th balsa and it is really 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 thin stuff and so you have to be careful with it because it's nice and fragile and we're going to hope for the best on that this is not going to roll straight excuse me one second if you've noticed I do not match the taper to the mandrel I make it work the way it is and one consequence of that is that you have to pay close attention to exactly how you're rolling this onto the um, onto the mandrel. Come on, you stop that. And sometimes it takes a couple tries. So what we're doing here? Nope, I still got it wrong. I remembered it wrong. There we go. So I start on there like that. And voila. Roll it all up. And in it goes. Dripping wet in all its glory. So here's the one catch that you have to remember. Is so the one catch you have to remember is once you pull that back out, you need a, a dry place on the countertop to, uh, to unroll it. And uh, we'll come back in half an hour or whatever when it's dry, and we'll continue. Okay, so we've got these out of the oven. Um, paper should stay wrapped around. If it comes too loose, then you're going to probably have to redo it again. Uh, so you gently, once you get it over here, slide it off the end like so. Check for generalized happiness. And notice I've got a smaller mandrel here. And we check that that's going to work. Now, there are a million ways to do this. Um, who's your daddy? <laughs> what I'm doing is I am rubbing this on the edge of the, the piece of wood here, and then I join them together, and basically I just rub this until it is happy-like. Um, this stuff dries pretty quick when you're using it unthinned and whatnot. And so, what is what? What are you using? This is uh, Duco cement. Um, I do not use anything other than this. Uh, I, people have used Ambroid in the past, and I hear it works pretty good. Uh, I think Sigment would probably also work. Um, that being said, I have not tried those, so it's kind of up to you. I actually did use thick white glue one time, 
and it worked out. All right, now I'm not going to finish this, but you get the, the gist that in that short period of time, that's already hardened. Um, so our, before we run out of video space on the camera, we're going to attempt to, uh, oh boy, we have an interesting issue here. There we go. Um, I'm going to just quickly show what I'm going to do with the tail boom. I'm going to attempt to. Why don't you pause the uh, video? Okay, we're back. Um, had a little argument with the paper. So what I'm gonna do, boy that's skinny at that end. That's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna start midway here and then I'll, eventually I'll close up that end with a piece of uh, wire as a mandrel. Um, we're gonna start in the happy zone here. And as you can tell, I have a, uh, you know, they have canned laughter in those old comedies or sitcoms, and I have built in uh, applause. So, yeah, fun times. This one's not closing up. May have to work on this a little bit. But anyway, the point is that you're going to work your way along this thing. And the main thing you want to watch out for is making sure with wood this thin that it never sticks to the mandrel um, because it will uh, it will tear. But anyway, you work your way on. Some... All right, so you have to keep sliding as you you work your way out because the taper does not match the real steep taper of this uh, of this mandrel. Okay, so it's been about a, a week. Um, right out a week since we um, finished out the motor stick and got the airplane finished during the week and so at this point it's uh, it's actually completed so the uh, motor stick ended up about 100 milligrams which is which is not bad uh, 74 for the uh, the tail boom didn't add much weight with glue, which is what you always want to see. I think I added about uh, six milligrams back here and uh, about the same on the motor stick. Um, one thing I noticed is this motor stick is the same uh, dimensionally as the old one, uh, but it twists quite a bit more and that's because it's longer uh, and that's most noticeable in the wing. Gotta be careful about that. Um, in that the, the wing posts are farther apart so you see more angular difference. Things to note, the, uh, the bearings and the, uh, and the rear hook, if you go on our website, there's a link in the description below um, that will take you to an article I put together on how to install those. And these are very small, but they are installed the same way as the larger ones. Um, and you just use wire to drill through pilot holes to put your wing post in. Those are again secured with Duco cement. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, a little bit challenging to, to drill the hole back here for such a very small diameter uh, uh, tail boom. I mean, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch in diameter or outer diameter uh, back there, but everything worked out pretty well. Didn't add much weight with uh, glue to seal things up. So all of that worked out very, very well. Um, I think that's about all there is to, to really mention about that. So we're going to actually fly it just um, because we can't. So, we're just going to crank in enough to get the float around the room a little bit. And I um, should mention the covering and everything is adhered the same way as in the article. Um, or not article, the, uh, the other video here on our channel. So if you want to see that, that's a very popular video we've gotten. Uh, propeller is assembled the, the same way as the um, article there. Um, this is our, um, our um, torsion spring uh, F1R hub, the one that's um, I believe it's the V2.0 uh, hub. Uh, the bearings, these are actually the bearings that we sell on our website. These are the 8,000 inch bearings. So everything all parts for this are, are readily available other than the covering material. Um, this is Y2K film and 
this stuff is no longer manufactured and it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to locate. And let's see here. They didn't really give it enough power to get a good first climb going, but it's going all right. We'll wait a few minutes and I'll tap the propeller and we'll get it climbing on up into the ceiling. As you can see, that wing really, really twists quite a bit. Um, and some might think that wing looks a little bit floppy, but that one's actually, in my opinion, a little bit too heavy. Uh, it's about 115 milligrams, and I'd like to get that down to about 80. So we'll see on that part. Let's see here. Are you ready to... Tell this excites youngins quite a bit. It's kind of funny given that um, one of my flying buddies always talks about giving a class and uh, one of the students going, Can you make it fly any faster, mister? entertainment on this one for now. Especially since somebody else is trying to fly planes in here. Okay, so there you kind of have it. Uh, if you have any further questions about how to build various parts of these airplanes, I think we've actually gone over the majority of the work on that. Uh, if you go on our uh, website and on our, our channel here, most of how to do this is, is detailed. Uh, we may do one more video on making the curved outlines, but those are, are fairly straightforward, much simpler than all the rest of this. So, uh, like I said, any questions you have, let us know. And uh, we're working on some more videos uh, video projects on this topic in the future. Have a nice day.